Derbyites, we are back once again for just another slugfest, but this one's really special because I've got some new people that you may not have seen before, and I'm so excited that I get to chat with them all because they're all super cool and they know what they're talking about, and really, like, the, the more voices we have, the better. As you may or may not know, I'm Rob LeCurrier, I'm Senior Editor at Gold Derby, and I'm here. I'm really delighted to be joined by Jack Mahanes, who's calling in from Nashville. Uh, we've got Sebastian Mendoza from Mexico City, Brian Rowe from Reno, Hunter Taylor from Raleigh, and Chris Sang from New York City. And of course, I'm dialing in from Sydney. Um, you know, guys, I'm so excited to have you all on. Uh, we have so much to talk about. So let's just get straight into it, okay? So look, let's let's talk about best picture. That's the big one. The Oscars are coming up and already, you know, people are talking about what could be the winner. And I've been going back and forth between like three or four films, trying to like make stuff up in my head to keep it interesting because, you know, we all do that low key. But I have been kind of convinced that Everything, everywhere, all at once looks like it could even sweep. Like it could do quite well. And this is before DGA, PGA, WGA, all the GAs, right? So once they they all kind of lock in, then we'll get a better sense. But I think at this point, everything, everywhere is the film to beat. And I'm really interested to know what you guys think about what could be the film that might upset it. I'm going to you first, Brian, because... Your social media game is so hot. It's literally on fire. And I think uh, I'm really curious to know what you have to say. So go for it. Well, thanks for having me here. This is a huge thrill. I really do think that everything, everywhere, all at once pretty much has this in the bag. I feel like every other nominee, there's like at least one flaw against it. Like if I had to pick a second choice right now, I guess I'd go with Banshees of Inishirin because that one at the Golden Globes in the picture category, comedy or musical. And I mean, the Fablemans has never been that strong all season. A lot of people have said Top Gun Maverick can do it, but it hasn't really won picture anywhere. And I feel like that's kind of a hope diction for a lot of people because it is so beloved. I just feel like everything, everywhere, all at once, it got the 11 nominations got the most nominations and seemed to be getting into categories pretty much everything it could. So there seems to be a lot of, you know, love for this movie. It just keeps hanging on. It will have been almost to almost a year after it premiered at South by Southwest that it'll be winning all these Oscars on March 12th. I think that's the winner right now. I don't know what can beat it. Yeah. I, I know what you're saying, man. It's like, I don't want it to be this boring. I want there to be more of a race. Um, and I'm just like thinking, Hunter, what do you reckon? You think that this is, do you think there's any film that can take it down? I think the only one would potentially be Banshees just because I can see it getting a lot of twos and threes um, on the preferential ballot. And some people think that maybe everything everywhere might not be as accessible to some certain Academy members, um, that certain demographic that we hear about. Um, but I don't think that it's going to take that many votes away. Um, but I, yeah, I think that's in a nice second place position. Again, you mentioned Top Gun. I think there's a world where it wins PGA. I'm kind of like waiting for that. Uh, not to compare it to last year's race, but like after the whole coda, if you want to say, the momentum sh kind of shifted. And then we were like, actually, now that's what's firmly in first. So I guess I'm going to kind of play the waiting game just to see. But for right now, I think everything everywhere has it. Yeah, like the thing is, what you're referring to is the steak eaters, right? And that that's that's a term coined by the amazing Ann Thompson, one of our experts at the site, who we all love and adore, right? Um, I am I'm concerned about it. I know people, we all do, who are in that demographic, who are just like, I don't get the hot dog fingers. I don't understand this movie, the bagel. Like, what is this? <laughs> this is not going to win. Um, and that worries me. Like, and that means, and also, by the way, before I go to you next, Jack. But also, I think, I thought the movie was awesome, but I'm not passionate about the film. And that's just my own personal opinion. That's cool. We all have opinions about films. I know a lot of people who feel that way, who are like, yeah, this is a really good movie. It's beautifully made. Stephanie Hsu is so great, and so is Michelle Yeoh and all that. But I'm not, like, obsessed with it. And I'm not going to, if I was voting, I wouldn't put it at number one. Mm -hmm. I'd probably put it at number four just saying so that concerns me because i know that there's a lot of people in that demographic who love top gun maverick love it 
I watched it the other day again, and I just thought, this is such a good movie, and this is going to appeal to a lot of people in that demographic. Jack, what do you think? I pretty much agree with what everyone else has said, uh, or most of what everyone else has said. Um, I do think everything everywhere all at once, I think overperforming and getting a lot of nominations that it wasn't expected to get shows um, how strong it is as a whole. But I also think back to The Power of the Dog doing the exact same thing last year and getting a lot of nominations that we didn't expect. And then I think once the nominations came out, we all thought, oh, well, it's obviously going to be Power of the Dog. And then there, and then something, you know, ended up surprising by winning in Coda, you know, it started off at SAG Ensemble, then it won PGA, and it just kept gaining all this momentum until it won on Oscar night. The thing about Top Gun Maverick, um, since you brought that up, I have been reading a lot from like well-connected pundits like Pete Hammond and Clayton Davis that a lot of the academy members that I spoke to loved Top Gun Maverick. And so, and the one question also about Top Gun Maverick, who's going to rank it at the bottom? of their preferential ballot. Like who's going to rank it like eighth, ninth, or 10th? Probably not that many people. And I, when, um, and that was one of the reasons actually why I ended up um, putting Top Gun Maverick in my predictions at the last minute for adapted screenplay. And I was like, that was one of my long shot predictions that I actually got correct. So I do think it's a potential spoiler, but I do think that everything everywhere all at once is kind of too big to fail at the moment. Unless I start seeing some signs of weakness going forward, I'm sticking with it um, to win the whole thing. So that's very important. I you just reminded me that last year at this point in the game, I was like, Power of the Dogs got this. Yes, great. I love that movie. Love Jane Campion. Go the New Zealanders. Um, and then it kind of started falling apart. And it doesn't matter how many nominations you get these days, because that preferential ballot is just everything now. It's and Coda was such a lesson for us. It's about passion. We have to be very careful, but still at this point in the game, we haven't received all the, uh, the the knowledge that we get from the precursors, Sebastian. So I'm curious if you have any inkling where something might actually break for a different film in Breast Picture. I mean, yeah, I think for me, the, the problem with comparing it to Power of the Dog, and I think Power of the Dog suffered for the same reason that Roma did, which is like, it's a kind of movie that like a lot of people respect more than they're very passionate about. I think the reason why everything everywhere is like particularly like strange and kind of on its own is because it already sort of is a passion pick. You know, it's this is the kind of movie that you could see coming in as a late surge because there's a a sudden surge of passion for this movie, right? Uh, it does not strike me as like a front runner, um, and in one sense, it kind of worries me because uh, I personally I think I'd vote for this movie. Um, and front runners don't have like a great track record of going all the way through in the last few years. Um, and I think if, if anything, we'll take it down. It, it, it could be Top Gun and maybe Fablemans. I'm, I'm a little bit more skeptical of Banshees just because having seen the movie, it just doesn't strike me as something that would win Best Picture. Um, and that's just like a gut thing. That's not like yeah. all the precursors, everything's there, but you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Banshees, Banshees was my number one film of the year, but I still am very sceptical about it, whether it could go all the way. Um, Chris, last but not least, what are your thoughts on Best Picture at the moment? Uh, what hasn't been said? Um, <laughs> um, it repeat. It's fine. I mean, everything that was said about Banshees, I kind of feel that way about everything everywhere. I, I just... I am not falling for that trap again that I always fall for every year where the film with the most nominations at the Oscars that has a front runner status this early before all the guilds announce is is going to go all the way. Um, I really do think the Top Gun Maverick won, uh, winning PJ does ring true to me more than most because that is reflected on their nominations and how and how they really went for the blockbuster movies and like four sequels and so that could ultimately like be reflected in their winner and i really i don't think we should be sleeping on the fablements this quickly um because it's it has the globe win. Spielberg, one director, gave a very passionate speech. These days, that's enough to like have some momentum going along the way. And mm. it's just, 
it's definitely more tough because last year I, I had a feeling power of the dog would not win, but I had no idea what the alternative would be. And I sure as heck did not think it was Coda. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's all, I'm predicting Fableman's right now. Just it's, it is, is wow. mostly a default, but I feel like it's, for me, it's like more logical right now to predict that than everything everywhere all at once, which I do have like winning like things like SAG Ensemble and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, certain, and it could have a shot at WGA and DGA and the BAFTAs. So it's yeah. all, it's really all what, what happens later on. But right now I have Fableman's. It's a big factor. Like, obviously we are meeting a little early, but I just think it's nice to, kind of just put our mark in the sand, whatever the bloody terminology is about what we think is early in the, in the race. But yeah, Fablemans, I have a blind spot for Fablemans, probably because I personally didn't love it. Uh, and I sometimes my bias really shows when I'm looking at this objectively and I really need to kind of check myself. But if Spielberg wins DGA, that's going to really help. That's a huge factor for, for that film. And then, yeah, so uh, then PGA will be the big the big one, I, I think, as well. I don't think SAG Ensemble is as important as it used to be, but it certainly shows some level of support. Like, you know, remember when Parasite won? Um, that was huge. And I still didn't believe that Parasite had the momentum. I just could not bring myself to believe that that masterpiece, my number one film of 2019, could actually win and it did. So that bodes well for everything, everywhere, all at once, because it's a different film. It's a, it's a genre film and it's got bloody hot dog fingers i can't get over these hot dog fingers um mm -hmm. so <laughs> let's open it up now this is let's just you guys just you tell me let's who wants to talk about best actress because that's something that has been talked about ad nauseum the riseborough thing like if and <laughs> anyone who would who was suggesting that riseborough was going to lose her nomination i was just like nah you're an idiot go tell me what you think about best actress i do think yeah. andrea riseborough should skip the red carpet why? <laughs> Why? Because she's Why? gonna get how she's gonna get hounded with those questions, <laughs> and it's you just I just feel, I feel so bad for her like that her name has been dragged on for the last few weeks over all this you know quote unquote con Oscar controversy. Um, totally. But do you um, think she has a chance to win? Chris? No. <laughs> no. 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 I do. I, I can't do. Her in first. I have I, I have Blanchett. Wow. And it's honestly, I'm not losing any sleep over this. I really think she'll win. We have Blanchett. Yeah. Who else I think Blanch Blanchett. I think Blanchett looks right on paper, but I'm going with Michelle Yeoh. I think she can do it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So what I'll say is, I have Michelle Yeoh too. Um. And I've been really thinking about this because I mean, but this is one of the ones I think could be an absolute nail biter going into Oscar night. Um, and I think Michelle Yeoh, um, she's guaranteed to win SAG. There's no way that she's losing there. They're not going to go with the the more restrained, understated performance like Kate Blanchett's. Um, but if Kate Blanchett wins BAFTA, I think that that could be a real nail biter. But I think because I've been really like you know thinking about this, and I think when you have a really popular actress like Michelle Yeoh, who's been doing this for a long time, she's on her first nomination. She has a mm -hmm. chance to make history. The idea of giving Kate Blanchett her third might seem weird to you know a lot of academy members they might feel like do we really want to give her a third when we have a chance to give michelle yo her first and it is a the the showy role that they usually go for um and so you know kate blanchett is absolutely a possibility and um i mean my friend tar khan thinks michelle yo has this in the bag and i'm like i think this could be a real nail biter going to oscar night I, and i do think you know we saw with francis mcdormand a few years ago that if you're that beloved and i do think kate blanchett is someone that they would love to give a third oscar to but do they want to give it to her this year? And I'm not quite sure about that. Andrea Riseborough, like, look, the not like we should have all saw this nomination coming. I kind of wrote it off as like one of those. Um, <laughs> I wrote it off as like one of those. Oh, you know, it's this you know cute little PR thing, but it's not actually. Because it happens all the time, Jack. You're right. I mean, we hear about this every year about oh, this person got all the support and it doesn't materialize. So you're right to think that Riseborough was a was a you know wasn't going to happen. It made sense. Exactly. Exactly. Um, my only thing about why I don't think that she'll win is too Leslie going to be high priority viewing for people outside of the actress branch, because you have to remember, this is the whole body voting for the winner. 
And I just don't think given that um, this was the only nomination that two Leslie got, it's very hard to win when you're um, when you're the only nomination for your film, unless you're sweeping going into it. So that's why I have her in third, but that's why I really think that this is between Michelle Yeoh and Kate Blanchett, but I'm going to go with Michelle Yeoh uh, for now. I worry I that know. with the, um... Michelle Yeoh, it, it could happen sort of like with Anthony Hopkins a couple of years ago, where it's it's sort of like the the actor that people think is the consensus best, and then a lot of people saying, well, no, everyone's going to vote for the second choice, which is like the you know the the passion pick, right? And then sometimes the Academy just end up being more snobby than you expect, and just like no, that that was the best performance. Everyone kind of agrees with that, and we'll yeah. just go in, you know. So yes. I, I think I have Kate Blanchett for now, but yeah, I could change. I've had Kate Blanchett in like all year. I never really moved from Kate until um, the Riseboro thing happened. Um, Cause I had her in, I had her getting a nomination. I, I, I was like, is this really gonna happen or am I being crazy? And then it ended up happening. And I think that since she's in, since there's been so much chatter online, I do think that there will be more eyes than normal. Um, will it have enough uh, support with all the other branches? I'm not sure. I have run first just to kind of have fun with it um, and to say I did if that were to happen. <laughs> um, but um, I think with all that's happened recently, I think people, she may garner some sympathy um, because we've seen what Christina Ricci posted and um, uh, every people are saying this shouldn't have even been a discussion. She didn't do anything. She's been virtually silent. Um, I think she could garner a lot of sympathy votes in that way, especially if maybe people are going back and forth between, is it Kate? Is it Michelle? Yo, um, maybe they were like, this is new. And like you said, everything everywhere came out almost a year ago. And when did people see Tar? Several months ago. When did people see Two Leslie? Maybe like really recently maybe they haven't seen it yet maybe they're watching it next week to just catch up maybe they're mm -hmm. like a recency bias type thing could go her way wow really great. that's a really excellent point i mean we know I, kate we know kate winslet's gonna vote for her so <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> Brian, I do well, think uh, what I do think what helps Kate Blanchett is that her movie got into picture and director and screenplay yeah. I mean, I don't even think it was expected to get into editing and cinematography. So I would say it kind of overperformed. So if it had just gotten into like, you know, only director and actress, I'd say Michelle Yeoh has got a very strong chance. But because Kate Blanchett, her movie did so well, it's really tight right now. I do think it comes down to SAG. If Michelle Yeoh wins at SAG, gives a great speech, I think Michelle can do it. If Kate Blanchett wins at SAG, it's going to be a tough road ahead for Yeo. And what's wow. really like probably unprecedented, I don't even know if this ever happened, but this year BAFTA is before SAG. So that's going to mm. affect Crazy. all the categories, mm -hmm. all the categories and like what, where the momentum shifts. And yeah, and so it makes, who knows if SAG may be influenced by that. Wow. I do think that if uh, Michelle Yeoh wins, it'll show just a lot more support for everything everywhere than I expect. and. I feel like the, if if her name gets announced, oh, um, oh my God, it's happening! Best picture, it's yeah. it's locked in. I feel like here's the thing: like I'm, uh, if Michelle Yeoh wins, I will be thrilled beyond belief. If Kate Blanchett wins, I'll be thrilled beyond belief. And then if Andrea Riseborough <laughs> wins, I'll probably pass out. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's a win-win-win for me. I don't think Anna de Armas and Michelle Williams really have a shot here. And the great nominations, I'm not criticizing it at all, but I just think it's a three horse race. You guys have come up with the best arguments. I am, I'm shook. You really, you've really made me think this is going to be a nail biter. Because, and and I think it was Sebastian who raised Anthony Hopkins. That's a huge thing for me because when that happened, I was speechless because I would have put bet my house that. Chadwick Boseman was going to win Best Actor, right? And so did the Oscar producers, by the way. So they fucked that. I, I actually, I actually did bet money on Anthony Hopkins, so I, 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 I went home. I went home pretty happy that day. Yeah. Wow. Well, I just thought there's no way he's going to win again, and when he did, oh, because I loved that performance. And and that's some. The Academy are not that. They're not sentimental as sentimental as we think they are. They're a bit more sentimental than the Emmy voters, but. They vote for best performances often, 
And sometimes in the supporting categories, they give it out as a consolation prize or a, a, a like a, a what, 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 you know, like a lifetime achievement that you would get for like James Coburn, Coburn or something. But generally speaking, an actor and actress, it goes to the best performance. So Kate Blanchett is absolutely in this. And I, and I will not hear anyone suggest that, you know, oh, they won't give it to her because, you know, Michelle Yeoh is overdue. But on the other hand, Michelle Yeoh is so undeniably great. In, mm. in that film and then when you do see two leslie i mean not everybody feels this way but i've seen so much support her and i know from speaking to a few academy members myself uh, off the record they're hearing a lot of noise about andrea and how they sort out the performance because of the uh, quote unquote controversy and thought that's all nonsense this performance is amazing and i'm going to vote for her so this is absolutely a three horse race and i cannot wait to see what transpires over the next few weeks. Let's move on though, because we don't have all day. Best actor. Another one giving me heart though, because um, Brandon Fraser has the narrative, okay? Um, then you've got Colin Farrell. He has never been nominated before and he is so unbelievable in Banshees of Sharon. I had the pleasure of speaking to him the other day and we had a really long chat about you know, his process and, and how he felt about the role. And it just really solidified for me that he really, really put everything into this performance and so deserves to win. And then, of course, you've got Austin Butler, who is like a chameleon. He's so great in Elvis. Um, Paul Mescal broke my black heart in After Sun. And Bill Nye finally nominated after being snubbed for love, actually, 20 years ago. Um, and he's so good <laughs> as well. This category just kills me, guys. So, who? Th there's not one front runner here. It's it's a it's a similar situation. So, who's going to win? Who wants to go first? I'll go jacket. first. Okay. So yes, I agree. Um, for Bill Nye and um, Paul Mescal, the nominations are prize. Um, the other three are in with a very legitimate chance of winning. I have Austin Butler winning. I've had him winning since early December because. Um, one of the things I was really thinking about um, kind of, you know, over the holidays and even before the Oscar nominations came out, you know, the Academy, um, the thing that Brendan Fraser also has in his favor is the physical transformation, but Austin Butler has the physical transformation into such an icon. And so, and we've seen that, especially in the lead acting categories, the Academy loves it when they do the physical transformation into a real life person. And the other thing that he has going for him, Elvis got into Best Picture, it got a lot of craft nominations. And The Whale really underperformed. It did the exact same thing Ma Rainey's Black Bottom did. It missed Best Picture and Adapted Screenplay. And one of the things I mentioned is that the Academy earlier said the, uh, this is the whole body voting. If this was just actors voting, I don't think Brendan Fraser, I think he would have a better chance. Um, but given that the whole um, body votes, I really think that um, the whale missing those categories really hurts him. And so, and Austin Butler, you know, he just nails everything from the voice to the, you know, stage moves to his mannerisms. I mean, he really just, it, it, it reminded me like Rami Malek a few years ago with Bohemian Rhapsody, where he just disappears into the character to the point where you forget you're watching an actor. And so, um, and then you mentioned Colin Farrell. Yes, I really think that he's a dark horse. I mean, I've talked to some people, you know, awards friends that really don't think he's in the running to win. I really, really disagree. I think Colin Farrell absolutely can win this. And, you know, the one thing that um, he can definitely win BAFTA and he doesn't have to win SAG. He can do exactly what Olivia Coleman did and just win the Comedy Globe, BAFTA. And then because the Banshee Center Sharon has a whole lot of support as a whole, that could be a, a place where he'd give it a win. But I have Austin Butler for now. Wow. Who's next? My, my only worry with Austin Butler is that I feel like he's like not even the protagonist of his own movie because I find that like not only like is the story kind of centered around Tom Hanks's character, but on top of that, I feel like Baz Luhrmann is the protagonist of this movie. <laughs> you know, like when when you watch it, you're you're trying to the entire time you're like, yeah, yeah, like the style, you know. Yeah. And I feel like Austin Butler's performance is maybe the third thing that I think about when I walk out of there. <laughs> um, but but I, I really do agree with your point. I, I I did put money on Austin Butler, so I hope that kind of materializes. But uh, I I just watched The Whale last night. It just arrived to Mexico um, a couple of days ago, so I finally got a chance to see it. And yeah, that guy. <laughs> gives an incredible performance. So I was, I was extremely impressed. Um, but I feel like 
I feel like the more time passes, because I totally agree with you with the whale that totally underperformed what you said about Maraini. That was an excellent point. Um, so I'm sort of, I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe Colin Farrell can actually pull through, um, which would be great for me because I, I, I love him. He's amazing. I so those are all, those are all valid points, but I am going with Fraser. I think Fraser can do it. I mean, the critics choice speech was amazing and I think he might win at SAG. And I also feel like even though it did the whale didn't get into picture and director. It kind of feels like the iron lady, Meryl Streep and that movie winning makeup and hairstyling, uh, what 11 years ago. Like, I feel like the whale can win makeup and hairstyling and then best actor. I just don't know if enough people really know who Austin Butler is yet. He's a very young performer. Like, does everyone want to give him an Academy award right now? They might say he has time. We can give him one next time, whereas Fraser has this amazing narrative, this comeback story that is so heartwarming, and he's bringing it in the whale. Like it is a an extremely emotionally devastating uh, performance, physical transformation. Like I think he will be close to Butler, but I think Fraser can can do it. I agree. Um, I've had Fraser the whole the whole time. I think that he is going to win SAG. I just think that it's such an actor's friendly performance, um, along with Elvis as well. But I think when you're really looking at the craft of the camera's just on him, I know that the prosthetic and the makeup help. But I, I think, like you said, the narrative on top of just this gut wrenching performance. And do we think that had the globe situation been different would he have won do we think that because because people are saying he didn't he didn't win because of x y and z reasons uh and if he had won do we think that he would be steamrolling everyone's predictions right now he might have been in a better position had he won the globe and i remember thinking like if he won the globe after everything kind of like um how gary oldman won the globe a few years ago after what he said about the hollywood for poor press we were like, yeah. if he won there, then he set the rest away. I just think, you know, the whale only got that nomination at the Globes. And we saw that they loved Elvis. Like it got best uh, best film nomination, Baz gone to director. Um, and and the one thing um to um I guess respond to Brian's point, I really feel like narratives only go so far. And also, you know, the point with the Iron Lady, I don't really think the Iron Lady was expected to be like this big vehicle aside from Meryl Streep, whereas the whale was kind of contending for to get into like best picture and some more of those above the line categories. So I think it's a little bit of a different situation. But I think um, and yes, Brendan can absolutely win SAG, but yes, but Austin also has a very SAG friendly performance, too. And it was in a box office hit. And so all these SAG voters very likely saw Elvis. Um but I, I do think that Austin would have won the Globe, even if um, without um, Brendan Fraser's um, situation with the Hollywood Foreign Press. But, but that's just my opinion. I could be totally wrong, but just my sense. Yeah, I think um, something I was going to say earlier with Best Actress, like I know the Oscars award per, do award the best performances, but they also award like, you know, they also award the overdue factor. And yeah. something, all I think all Brendan Fraser needed was a was a televised speech. Mm -hmm. That's that's all he really needed to win to go to have something along the way. His Globe loss easily can be explained why. For we don't have to open that can of worms. But um, and though even though the whale did underperform at the Oscars, um, I think. Frazier is just, and we'll probably like talk about this when it comes to Angela Bassett, he's pretty much in a world of his own. Whereas, sure, Butler has the stronger movie, no doubt, but The Whale has enough support in the precursors leading up to the Oscars, including BAFTA, including SAG, where Hong Chao, that train started going. And so I have Frazier. I, again, another category that I am pretty confident in. So. I, I think the only place where I'd, I'd contend with that is just the fact that with, I mean, with actress, there's this kind of overdue thing with Michelle Yeoh, but I don't know if anyone's necessarily thinking, oh, Brennan Fraser totally got snubbed for George of the Jungle, you know, 20 years ago. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, don't, right. I don't think he's necessarily yeah. overdue for, for an award. 
like per se. It's 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 right, a nice I, like homecoming, you know. Right. Like I meant I was I meant about anything. the narratives. Sorry about that. I right. meant like no, 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 when yeah, it that comes to like the, when Oscars awarding like narratives such as Gary Oldman, such as people who haven't never won an Oscar that should by this point. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's a good point. It's a really good point. I my only other thing I want to say is on this is um again I'm sorry to beat a dead horse, but the steak eaters will probably go for Boston Butler. Because every single person that I know or have spoken to in that age group love that movie and love Elvis and love him as Elvis. So it's giving me, as you can tell, a little bit of heartburn because I just don't know what to think. And that at this point, I'm just going to stick with um, Colin Farrell because I just feel like his performance was so undeniable. Um, it broke my heart. And anyone who sees Banshees, I guess, can probably would probably say that he was the the star of that film and you know let's give that film something um that's where i'm going right now let's see what happens let's move on supporting categories i think generally speaking they seem more locks than the leads and kwan i think is un, just completely out front and i don't think he's touchable and i think the same thing for bassett i just feel like angela bassett is very overdue for a win she is beloved, respected, admired, and she's so damn good in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The only problem for her is she's in a Marvel movie. I think this is the first Marvel performance ever nominated. And, you know, some people are going to think, do we really want to give an acting prize to that? And to those people, I say, shut up. Yes, we do. And, um, and as far as Kwan's concerned, he is like the story, his narrative, you know, from, you know, as a child actor and, He's just so lovely and sweet. We interviewed him recently at Gold Derby, Sam Eggman, my colleague, and he was just, he's just, he's a beautiful person. He's going to really charm every single person on this journey to the, um, to the, the Oscars night. And so I feel like they're both in it. Okay. So I'm wondering if any of you don't agree with that assessment. And if not, perhaps maybe who is that one actor or actress who could steal it away from the front runner? So I, I agree that, that, oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Brian. <laughs> so I agree that Quan has this. I don't think there's any way that he can lose. I It does give me a little bit of pause about Angela Bassett being in a Marvel sequel. I think she's the front runner. She's probably going to win. But if there was some sort of shocker surprise in either of the supporting categories on Oscar night, I think it would be supporting actress. And I think it'd be Carrie Condon for the Banshees of Minas like if I think that could happen just because Black Panther Wakanda Forever is not really nominated much at anywhere else. It's what two other categories, something like that. Whereas Banshees is everywhere. And there might be enough Academy voters that are like, do we want to give an acting prize for a Marvel sequel? Like, I feel like that could happen, although I want Angela Bassett to win. I mean, she deserved to win, you know, 29 years ago for what's love got to do with it. I would love to see that happen. But don't count out Carrie Condon. She might win at BAFTA, and she could take supporting actress at the Oscars. Chris, what do you think? I, I second that, everything you just said. Uh, just really watch out for BAFTA. Because um, I don't have Farrell winning BAFTA. Um, and I don't know, other than maybe original screenplay, I don't know what else Banshees is going to win. Um, the fact that Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, got five nom got more nominations than Avatar um so at the oscars so that shows like there's a lot of support and just and same with fraser angela bassett pretty much has a life of her own like people would be voting because of you know her legacy as an actress and and i she's definitely winning sag i have no question about that but just watch out for bafta if she if bassett wins bafta i think she wins the oscar mm -hmm. i think the it's it's tough. I I'm, I agree. Angela Bassett is probably going to win. the The problem is that yeah, with with, I, it does give me pause. But looking at the other nominees, I just can't see who could take it because I don't really think Carrie Condon would beat Angela Bassett just from just from the performance. It's not really as meaty as Angela Bassett's. It's not there's there's no like big Oscar scenes in there that will that will totally move everybody and and give her the win. Um, and I think I think on a performance basis alone, if we're just kind of 
for getting uh, precursors and things like that. I think Stephanie Sue's performance is probably the most likely to have sort of a passion surge. Mm. The problem is it just has no precursors to like get her on like on stage, deliver a great speech like before the Oscars, you know? If precursors were just out of the picture, I feel like Stephanie Sue would be like, okay, best picture, front runner, possibly winner, you know, really, really big performance. He's almost a co-lead, you know? So on performance alone and just on seeing the movie, I would think that Stephanie Sue could be that person to overtake. It's just, she's not nominated anywhere. And it's, 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 yeah. Dominated SAG. That, that's true. I mean, and I don't know if it, if it would win SAG, but if 70 Sue does win the SAG, that yeah, I would, I would, yeah. I would, I would bet on her to win the Oscar, I think. Yeah. Yes. Good point. Um, I think Jamie Lee Curtis being in the category hurts Stephanie Shue a little bit. Yes. Because that's the issue. They, they can split votes. Same thing with sure. Brendan Gleeson. Like, like when you have two actors from the same movie uh, in the, you know, in the, in the same category, it's tricky these days for, to have one of them win. Yeah. One has to be a standout. I mean, Kiri right. Kwan, he's, if everything everywhere loses everything else, that's the one category it definitely wins. So. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. And one of the things that um, I wrote in um, my article recapping Jessica Chastain's win last year, if you really look at it, it um, sometimes when um, <clears throat> sometimes it's really about how the category lines up and, and so really looking at, and I remember um, when the nominations came out on, on looking at this category, things really lined up really well for Angela Bassett. I mean, um, to you know your point, Brian. Yes, when you have two stars um, from the same movie in a category, I think if one's not like the like overwhelming favorite, like when Diane Weist won over um, one for Bullets Over Broadway with Jennifer Tilly in the category, I think that that's that's like one of the few exceptions. But given that you no, know, neither Jamie Lee Curtis or Stephanie Sue is like the front runner, I think it's really gonna be hard for one of them to emerge to the front. Um, Hung Chow was a respectable um, coattail nomination, or actually I should say a great coattail nomination because I thought she was great in the movie. Mm -hmm. Terry Condensa, maybe. Um, she was personally my favorite performance out of the five. Um, but I just don't think that, you know, she has like, for example, what Mark Rylance had to pull off the upset that, that he'd over, over, over Sylvester Stallone. And, and I remember some people were saying like, what if Angela Bassett uh, becomes Sylvester Stallone? Sly did not have ha does not have half the respect that Angela Bassett has as an actress, and she's someone. I feel yeah. like if there's anyone who could ever get away with winning for a Marvel movie, it's Angela Bassett. Um, and I just think that you know she has the support of her peers, and I think the fact that Wakanda Forever has four craft nominations shows that she she'll get the support of her peers and a lot of people in the tech branch. So I think that she'll be able to overcome it. And then Quan. This is the only above the line category where I'm 100% confident, where I don't think there's any anyone else has a chance. So, but yeah, I'm like 80 to 85% confident in Angela Bassett. One more thing I will say, um, I'm not going there. I do think Angela Bassett's going to win SAG, but my great friend Tarek Khan wrote an article for Gold Derby today saying that Jamie Lee Curtis could actually win at SAG. Now, I don't think Jamie Lee Curtis will win the Oscar, but it is possible that everything, everywhere, all at once could have an amazing night at SAG, and it's possible that she could be along for the ride. But yeah. I really, I think it's Angela Bassett. Hunter, I want to go to you before I have something to say on that, because that's very important. Go for it. <clears throat> Well, um, I I agree with pretty much everything everyone said. Um, I do think that it could possibly be Jamie Lee as the spoiler, though, just because of her cheerleader status um, for everything, everywhere, all at once. I don't think if she wasn't playing the game and really um, putting herself out there, she would even be nominated. I really enjoy her in the movie, but I think since she's just so out there, she just did Little Gold Man. She's she. I think I think she's still in it to win it, um, but uh, I think it's hard to deny Bassett at this point. Yeah, I He's, think her glow her globe loss really because the glow she loves. Yeah, that didn't help. PA loves Jamie Lee mm -hmm. Curtis, so I, I think her, her globe loss to Bassett was telling. I just think like there's two overdue ladies in that category, right? And Jamie Lee Curtis, I was so hoping she'd be nominated because I'm such a fan. I think she's so wonderful and she's just been overlooked in the path of some great performances. Like she should have been nominated for True Lies. Yes. Like, so damn <laughs> I love good. that performance. Yep. Oh yep. man, so brilliant. And um, 
if that movie was made now and it was a hit now, I reckon she probably would have been nominated. But back in that time, just that wasn't the kind of film that they would um, nominate in the acting categories, particularly because it was an uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger film. Uh, and speaking of, by the way, another action hero, I, I, I think that Sylvester Stallone has a lot of respect. I, 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 and maybe because I'm just super biased because he's like one of my um, all-time favourites. That's another story. Um, <laughs> so uh, I do he like pulls him. out the poster from the... From the Pull story. out the poster. So I'll, I'll go and watch Tulsa King again because I just love that show. Um, but Jamie Lee Curtis, she, if she wins one of these precursors, we need to watch out and Angela Bass is going to need to start worrying because... Jamie Lee Curtis is beloved and she is really highly respected. When I see feedback on social media about her nomination not even being deserving, I just think that's bullshit. I like, think she's so good in that movie. Like she really is. She's iconic. Um, I, so I just think, yeah, for sure, she's an absolute possibility if it's not Bassett. What hurts her is, of course, Stephanie Shoes in the category as well. And by the way, of the five, I mean, Kerry Connor just, oh, God, I love her in that movie. But Stephanie, she blew me away. Wow, I'd never even heard of her. What a performance. And then Hong Chow. She should have been nominated for Downsizing and missed that. She's missed Emmy nominations in the past. She finally gets in for The Whale, and, and I'm so happy for her as well. That is such a killer category. Love it. All right, yeah. we've got to move on. So. I've been looking at some of the articles that you guys have written in the past. You've done some great work for Gold Derby. I'm so like, I'm so proud of the work that you guys bring to our site. It's just brilliant. Like, for example, Jack, I love how you've done some Oscar rewinds um, in the past and, you know, looking at Jessica Chastain and Olivia Colman and Francis McDormand. And Chris, you wrote um, not so long ago, a couple of weeks ago, about Diane Warren or Jay Ralph surprising at the And so Diane Warren made it through again for a movie that no one's heard of but they just love her in that category and you've also written recently about all quiet on the western front um maybe surprising in the adapted screenplay brian some of your articles like there's one article that you did not long ago a few months ago about bram stoker's dracula the 30th anniversary it's one of the best things we've ever done at gold derby so good um beautiful article there sebastian you wrote about um, R, 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 every time I say that, I feel like a pirate, um, making a push. Um, obviously, it fell short in Best Picture, but it's certainly going to maybe win Best Song. Um, you've also written about blockbusters in the Best Picture category, which, you know, of all years, we're finally seeing some blockbusters make a dent in that category. Um, Hunter, you've written some beautiful articles about the Golden Globes and the Emmys, and um, I'm hoping to see... Um, I want to see another article like you did about Kate Blanchett a few months ago. Um, you know, she was back then in September, we had a feeling that she was emerging as the front runner and you were right. So um, I say all this for anyone watching, because if you think you have what it takes and you have a voice and you, and you know what you're talking about and you want to write for Gold Derby, send me an email, send me a DM, just, you know, let me know. And, uh, and if it's something that you want to do, and it works out for you, then you, you could end up being on a slugfest like this in a year's time. Um, because all these guys um, I've either been friends with for a long time or just approached out of nowhere or they approached me. And I was like, yeah, let's do this. And, um, you know, it takes some time because Gold Derby has really high standards and we're very, very conscious about what we put out there in the world. But you all did it and your writing is so good. Uh, and I'm so happy that we, we all get to celebrate it today. So that being said, and by the way, if there's any women out there, can you let me know? Because we really need to get some more women in this in this uh, whole thing. It's a bit of a sausage party and we've tried and unfortunately we just haven't got there. We've got a couple of really amazing women on our staff, uh, Joyce Eng and Latasha, and um, we have a new um, social media expert, Jacqueline, but we need some more women writers. So please let me know. Okay, that being said, I want to think of one category that you all want to talk about where you think, we need to watch for it or it's something that you're hoping for, something like that. Just give me something that maybe we haven't really spoken about before. Who wants to go first? Um, I think we should really be looking out for tar in cinematography. Yes. I think that uh, I think that Florian Hoffmeister, I when I I've watched it a few times at this point, but the first viewing, Blanchett aside, that was what really stood out to me. You've got the really long takes. It makes it almost seem like a play, especially when she's doing um, the masterclass um, at Juilliard. Uh, that's oh, all done with right. take. And um, it's 
it just it, it really stands out in the category, especially with Top Gun no longer being there. So I think it's kind of up for grabs at the moment. And I think that because Tar has been overperforming um, and it overperformed at the Oscar nominations, I think that uh, it could rally some support around that. Um, I also kind of have a handout of um, for Todd Field um, in uh, director. Uh, have an article coming out about that soon. I uh, I think that could happen. I think he could maybe be like the like the critical consensus i just i really think that his work is just phenomenal and he's had so much love in the past for his other films i think this could be the one that maybe gets him across so i just interviewed florian hoffmeister two hours ago but oh, <laughs> for my youtube awesome. channel he does not think he's going to win i told him i think he is going to win and that's the exact same category that i wanted to talk about because I feel like the front runner, you could argue, is all quiet on the Western front. That movie also got into picture nine nominations. It is a gorgeous movie. Like that movie is shot so beautifully. But I do think there's something to Tar, especially that Juilliard scene. And there's like all of these little exquisite touches throughout the two hours and 40 minutes of that movie. I think that Tar could take this one. And it's not something everyone's going to be predicting. Wow. You know what? I have it in first as well, <laughs> so because I just think it's undeniable. Like All Quiet on the Western Front is some gorgeous work, and also Bardo, beautiful work. That movie was so underrated. I loved it so much, and it's it's a, it's it's gorgeous. I even Elvis and Empire of Light is a beautiful work, but Tar Florian Halfmaster, wow. How can that not win? So I've got it in first two. So everyone, maybe you might want to have a rethink about that category. All right, who else? I have a question for everyone because I've been really kind of going back and forth on this category, original screenplay. Um, I, you know, usually this category goes with what um, whatever's the most original. That usually plays a role in what wins this category. And that would definitely, in this case, be everything everywhere all at once. However, if they give the Daniels director, do you think they would want to give Martin McDonough a consolation prize or do you think they would just give the Daniels everything the same way they gave Bong Joon-ho everything for Parasite and in Yuri to everything for Birdman? What do you guys think? If they like the movie, if they like the movie, they'll give it everything. That's my yeah. take, especially with the movie like every everything everywhere all at once. So if I I think if they win one, they win the other. And then on the other hand, we've seen so many times in the past where screenplay categories do become consolation prizes. So that's why I think Martin McGonagher has it. And uh, I don't know, like Ruben Ostlin could make could, to do it. Uh, you know, like uh, Todd Field could do it. That's a tough category. I've, I've just got Martin McGonagher by default. But what do you guys think? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a really tough category. Watch out for WGA. Because Banshees is not eligible, and Banshees could easily win BAFTA. Um, but if everything, everywhere, all at once loses that, then I think that would, that would be like a licorice pizza losing to Don't Look Up last year. <laughs> yeah, I think everything, everywhere wins original screenplay. It is such an original piece of filmmaking, a great story well told. Director, I don't know if they have it yet. Like, I still think Spielberg could win director. Like, I don't think he's out of it. I think DGA will tell us where the wind is blowing, but I think everything everywhere wins original screenplay. And I agree with you. I definitely think when I just, um, I just made the switch to the Daniels today, just because I I have had Banshees winning for, I think about a couple of weeks now, but I just want to get your guys' thoughts on that. So that's why I asked. Yeah, DGA and BAFTA's, have... sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I don't know why I have this inkling, but I feel like if, if anything takes over everything everywhere in picture, I would see it lose like the original screenplay to Banshees. I think if I if either Top Gun, Fableman, or Banshees win best picture, I think Banshees wins best screenplay. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the, the best picture is kind of dependent for everything everywhere that it wins that category. Uh, because like you have to love the screenplay to love that movie, basically. Uh, if you have the support for the movie, it's it's almost entirely because of that screenplay, because uh, it's just so yeah. out there and it's so original. And is women talking a lot for adapted screenplay, or can anything else upset no. it? No, no, no. That's a killer. I don't, think so. I don't know what to do either. I've got women. It really, it really got it really 
genuinely got the bare minimum it could get <laughs> yeah. to even be a contender in this in this category. I I, I think it's a two horse race between that and all quiet on the Western front. Um, because even though it's a war movie, those rarely win for their writing. Um, if that wins BAFTA, like that, that could, that could be a telltale sign. And this reminds me of when a few years ago, when, when call me by your name won, when it was also kind of like a weak category, but we all knew call me by your name was going to win. Mm -hmm. But even then it had an, that had an acting and a music nomination to go with best picture, something that women talking both miss. So I hope it wins, but I am not as, con there are people that are really confident that it will win that category. And I just want to caution that with like how we have felt about women talking all season and overestimating it and then, you know, having it not perform to our expectations. So it's, I'm just being cautious. One of my worst friends said it's more like women tanking at this point. When, uh, <laughs> yeah, when it, when it really oh. started missing out. But yeah, but yeah, no, because I mean, I, you know, been seeing people be really confident about it, but I just, you know, I just, I kind of have it in first place just because it's just maybe the most writerly movie of all these nominees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I agree. I think it's a, it's a very weak front runner. And I definitely think it's ripe for an upset. I also think I it mean, helps that Polly has a previous nomination in the category for, for away from her. So she has been nominated here once before. Yeah. I think the last um, movie to win this category without a BAFTA nomination was like Cider House or, or um, that Ian McKellen. Oh, God, Gods, and Gods and Monsters with Fred and yeah. So Yeah. And that was after uh, the Oscars. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I'm still reeling. That Top Gun Maverick made it into this category. Uh, I remember watching if that wins pick if that wins picture, then that has to win that that category. Right. I mean, if they love it that much in the Academy, then it, and this is all of the Academy, not just the writers, then it could win this too. Um, you know, by the way, everybody, Kazuo Ishiguro is one of the greatest novelists of all time. He's like, you know, in 200 years, people will be talking about Kazuo Ishiguro and he's nominated here. So I'm almost thinking that he even has a chance if, if enough people in the Academy respect and admire his writing. And this category is completely open. Ryan Johnson, beautiful screenplay for Glass Onion. Wow. Um, yeah. And Sarah Polly, Women Talking. That, that film should have been nominated so much more. So it's, it's really exciting. Okay, what other categories before we, we wrap up? Anyone else have another category they want to talk about? Um, I was thinking, I was taking a look at documentary feature um, because I don't think that all the beauty in the bloodshed is going to win. Um, really? Yeah, it, it missed PGA for best documentary. Uh, and I, I started looking it up and in the last 15 years where that uh, category existed at the PGA, um five times uh has it happened where the winner at the oscars wasn't nominated and i was like okay well that's fine that's like 15 years it's like a third of the time but then looking into it those five times it's because there was like no crossover between the oscars and the pga anyway uh, like, or or maybe just one film but no more than that uh so the fact that there's three nominees from the oscars this year also nominated for the pga including Fire of Love, which I think, which is what I have at number one right now. Fire of Love strikes me as like a, like an octopus teacher mm -hmm. uh, kind of win uh, because it, it, it's got kind of a bit more of a feel good sort of thing behind it. And then Navalny, I wouldn't count out either because of like kind of the political Russian factor. Um, but yeah, I feel I have all the beating in the bloodshed third right now after those wow. two. I don't know what you guys think. I have That's such fair. a blind spot for documentary feature because and and the shorts to be honest just because I feel like I don't have enough bandwidth at the moment for everything and I'm just I just have to let some things go and then just trust my gut instinct and just go mm, that and so that's really interesting that you've said that because I just would have gone with all the beauty and the bloodshed because I know you know some of my colleagues at Gold Derby love that movie and they think it's going to win and that's it but Fire of Love I think I might check that one out and Navalny as well that would be a really great way for the you know, the the uh, left-wing woke mob at the Academy to upset the, you know, 
to upset all the people about, um, you know, supporting Ukraine or anti-Russia. So and they could make a political statement with that too. That's a really interesting point. Does anyone have anything, any thoughts about documentary that, you know, any informed thoughts about the category yet? No, except Munich Daydream was robbed of a nomination. <laughs> oh, I know. I would have picked that. Yeah. <laughs> The, the oh, one thing it. also I'll say is that no, both Navalny and Fire of Love are in are on streaming platforms, so they have mm -hmm. kind of more of a chance to to kind of be seen. And I think both of them, when like they got released uh, in theaters, they also both made more money than than uh, All Beauty and the Bloodshed. Uh, so I don't know. And so then you know people get on HBO Max and watch Navalny or or Disney Plus Fire of Love. Like I feel like that could just be, you know, they could be more seen. Really good. Yeah, Fire, Fire of Love is really accessible and it tells this beautiful love story that has this just really upsetting ending, but it's still kind of uplifting in a way that I do think it could take this category. Wow, okay, good to know. So final thoughts, anyone um, who hasn't had a chance to give us some, some kernel of wisdom? If not, then we might call it a day. Um, I want to thank everyone once again for joining us. It's been such a pleasure and um, hopefully we can do more of these. But in the meantime, everybody watching, please don't forget to keep your up predictions up to date at Gold Derby. That's the only place that really has that functionality on the internet. And um, and you know, share your thoughts on Twitter, on YouTube, on, you know, uh, on our site. And um, yeah, keep watching. We've got plenty more to come for the Gold Der at Gold Derby, including some live chats during each of the main guilds that I'll be hosting and uh, plenty of other really cool things to do. Um, so thanks everyone again for joining us and we'll see you soon.